before you just grab the POV and close the video, please listen for at least for just a second. There's a somewhat extensive note section that should help you with gem progression and some of the problems you might occur while playing this build, so I highly recommend reading it. Secondly, there are multiple trees available at the toolbar at the bottom that you can switch between to know how your progressions should look like. Please consider subscribing to this channel for daily gauntlet updates during the upcoming event. Now that we got that out of the way, let's dive into the POB a little more in depth. This gauntlet is a lot harder than gauntlets in the path, so I heavily optimized the early game for survival. We start by traveling through life on Marauder, which gives us flat armor, which should help with Act 1 quite considerably, as flat armor is a very strong set. After you reach Warrior's Bot, you should grab uh, Versatility, which allows the use of Frost Blink, grab Heart of Warrior for some life, and then Diamond Skin. After that, you will continue all the way uh, through Butchery to Barbarism through Resolute Technique. The things you, you need to know in uh, Act 1 are the things in these notes. So, I would start by mewling on a duelist, killing Hillock, chicken vendors, and you try to obtain some gear with links, uh, rings, and a rustic sash. Should also heavily prioritize getting a scale vest if you can. I'm not gonna go through every single link as you can see them in the POB, but just keep in mind that you are looking mostly for one blue socket, one or two green sockets, and the rest is just all red. Should be pretty easy to keep, keep your eyes out for that. Uh, the recipe you actually need to know in Act 1 at the end of it is this one. It, uh, you should do it with a wood splitter at level 13 and using a, either magic or a rare rustic sash if you somehow happen to have a rare rustic sash and a whetstone. Gives you a weapon that's good enough to absolutely obliterate Marvel, even with, with the lack of damage nodes we have. Marauder leveling in this gauntlet is going to be one of the safest of any class just because you get a lot of life, resist, armor. And once we actually get to normal lab and we click Unbreakable and get a decent body armor, we also have really good elemental damage mitigation, which is just way better than any other class will have, as if your main concern is survival. I often get asked when people should do Wildwood on this build. And I think my answer is you just skip it. You skip it until you are comfortable doing it in white maps. Because I don't think we benefit enough from it during the campaign, since it's very hard to actually get items with empty sockets because the build is so so get starved and the risk of dying in the leak mechanic is just like too high for no extra benefit after we are done with the initial tree pathing we go down and we pick up harvester of foes soul of steel bloodless call to arms don't forget to pick this up and steadfast with the fortify mastery we don't no longer need to use a fortify support gems and we can switch to brutality one thing that I will mention is, if you feel like you don't need Harvester of Falls, let's say you have good damage on your axe, or you just want to be as safe as possible, you could skip this to get to the life nodes faster. This is about how your skill tree should look in Act 9. And after this, you should try to aim to actually set up to be able to swap to Bone Shatter. Just to highlight a few things what we did is we dropped Harvester of Falls, we dropped Versatility, which means you have to actually fix your dexterity and end, probably coming from an amulet. If your gear is really good, you can also drop diamond skin. Now we want to connect through these string nodes, drop a few nodes there, uh, grab juggernaut, grab inexorable, grab tribal fury with the mastery for extra strike skill, and reservation master. If you are not experienced with the build, respecting the bone shatter can be a lot, so just make sure to double check the POV, make sure you are not missing anything important. And uh, this notes section should also help you with what the links should be once you are entering maps. Just make sure you actually read this map part, because I think it's important enough. Keep in mind, as mentioned in the beginning of this uh, note section, you should be on the lookout for granite flasks and for mana leech sources. I will show you in this uh, short clip to why the granite flask is so good. Let's say we are in Act 10 and we are trying to get a decent weapon to use for early maps. What we need to do is find a weapon or ultra weapon or use the Screaming Essence of Contempt to get a tier 3 or tier 4 flat fist. From here, the weapon can be magic or rare, doesn't really matter, and we can do the Granite Flask recipe. So the way we do it is Use a granite flask, an augmentation, and a weapon that already has a flat fist roll, and you get flat fist roll of one tier higher. As you can see, we are updating from tier 4 to tier 3. Here, you want to grab an extra augment, 
and uh, try to roll for attack speed. If you get lucky, like I did here, you can actually re the attack speed and use this weapon by crafting phys physical damage over time, uh, physical damage on there. Bam, your weapon's good enough. If you don't get lucky, you can upgrade it one step further by doing the same recipe up to tier 2. This is the highest it upgrades to, you cannot upgrade it to tier 1. And then you can repeat the process. This is more likely to happen than actually getting attack speed. And you can craft physical damage. If you got lucky with Betrayal, you might also be able to craft physical damage and impel chance, but it is a lot more expensive. But it is a better craft. And a weapon like this is more than good enough to clear yellow maps, even like early red maps sometimes. Now let's talk about endgame a little bit. If your goal is level 90, you should literally just hit it in tier 5 maps. Don't even enter yellow maps, don't even enter red maps. White maps are completely fine for level 90. If your goal is level 95, I suggest doing it in tier 9 and tier 10. I think you should just avoid red maps if you can, because if you have enough time, you are way more likely to get to level 95 if you just stay in yellow maps. Jack doesn't really take much damage from the extra haste on yellow maps, just because the hits still get fully mitigated. But the second you step over the threshold and you start doing tier 11s or higher, the extra chaos damage might actually become very rippy. And GMP is just a mod that creates a lot of like situations that there's no counterplay to. So I would highly recommend to just play as safe as possible. When it comes to what league mechanics you want to farm, the answer is most likely just going to be the classic SSF answer. Betrayal and Expedition. When it comes to skill tree, I know a lot of people actually rush precise technique on a jug, but I highly recommend not rushing it until you actually have enough gear after doing your level 90 rock. So this is my pre-precise technique tree that just grabs a lot of extra power in Morador area and uh, doesn't go to precise technique at all. We only go to precise technique when we actually have enough suppression to travel over there and make this suppression wheel really good with suppression mastery lucky. Speaking of precise technique, make sure you actually balance your accuracy. In this POB, the level of uh, precision is quite low, but if you just need more accuracy, just keep clicking the level up. The life cost is not too high, so just always make sure your precision, uh, your precise technique is working by adjusting the precision level. There's not too much to point about the gear. Uh, the only thing you should really focus on, Rogue, is especially a really, really thick body armor. Glorious Blade is the best base, and if you can somehow get armor and Fizz DR and Gravitious Crab, you are pretty much never dying to Fizz Damage while mapping, ever. You're just way too tanky against that damage type. The only other item that I feel like is worth mentioning because it's specifically different from the usual gear that you could normally see is uh, Torment Essence Boots. You could also do it on a belt, and the idea here is to actually get 100% Avoid Shock, combined with the implicit and uh, these nodes at thick skin. So we can switch our Pantheon from uh, uh, Garukan to Relakesh, which uh, prevents us just randomly dying to bleed. Even though Jag is not weak against bleed, it's still something that you have to pay a lot of attention to to actually not die to it. If your goal is to just level as high as possible, you don't actually need this, of, this good of a gear. Just make sure your Kyocerus is actually capped, and otherwise, you just need life, armor, nothing special, really. If you want to play Tinctures, uh, I would suggest using All Damage Can uh, Shock Tincture and replacing your Quicksilver Flask with it. It's a significant amount of damage, but it also requires you to use a suffix to actually get chance to shock. But it is about 30% more damage, and the only thing you really lose for it is Quicksilver, unless you already have good charms, then you probably want to just play Primalist with good charms. The, the charms you would be looking for here is 100% suppression. I hope that covers pretty much all the basic things. Just If you have any questions, make sure to ask, either in YouTube comments, but ideally on my Twitch, since I will be streaming Gauntlet all day, and I probably won't have much time to actually read the YouTube comments. Make sure to check the notes section, my make sure to check the leveling trees and i'll see you guys next time remember try to die less than this does